G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I want to show you guys how I grow sweet potato. Over the years, I've learned lots of tips and tricks, and I want to pack them all into this video, no particular order, and show you guys exactly how I do it. It's dead set easy. Now, it's blowing a gale out here, so what I'm going to do is voice over in this video, it'll make it easier for both of us. So, let's get into it. So here I am in the patch. I'm about to refurbish the bed and harvest some sweet potato that's been growing for about, you know, two to three months. Not a long time. I can grow sweet potato in the one spot for years on end, but in this particular case, it's only been a few months. It just grows wild at our place. Even in that bed there that we just saw with the blue tarp, I tried to, I tried to kill it off in that particular part of the bed and it grew out the side. And then at the back here, it's growing like a ground cover. You can walk all over it and it'll and, and around those back garden beds there it, it just grows back and it doesn't get trampled down and it's actually quite a wonderful weed suppressant but it'll grow up as well like in this trellis example we used to grow it out the front there and it took me ages to get out of our front bed but yeah it'll grow up a trellis and look quite attractive wherever the vine goes it'll send down little runner roots and they will grow new tubers so it can be really difficult to get rid of if you've got a big garden and you just let it run wild but that is a bit of my thing i like to grow or what i call disperse gardening and just let plants go to seed and come up wherever see this tuber here that's about the right size i love them about that size they're great to roast there that's an example of the orange variety the one I was harvesting just here is the purple variety and they have a white flesh. The orange variety, which most people are used to, has the orange flesh. Both are good. To be honest, I think the purple variety is more vigorous, but I like the orange variety for taste. Here's a really great example of how the vine has shot down a root and then created a tuber. Now when I go through the tubers that I've dug up, if any are, are buggered like that one, I'll just bung it straight back into the ground or replant it when I get the chance. You know, it's not worth eating, but it'll certainly regrow very easily. Anything sort of over three inches and under seven inches or the size of a large cucumber is perfect. I, I just think that that's about the best growing range because the flesh is nice and firm and it doesn't get too grainy. When they get too big, like I'll show you later, they get way too grainy. So once I've sorted it out, I'm left with a whole heap of roots and smaller tubers. And that's what I use to replant back into the next bed. In this case, I'm going to replant it back into the same bed. You can do that for several times or several years in a row. And then it's a good idea to move it away and find a new bed for your sweet potato. Otherwise, they can start to attract pests and weevils and slugs and those type of things will start to ruin all the tubers. So I just go through, if the bed is a little hard, well then I'll mash it up a bit because the soil is best for sweet potato when it's nice and loose. Sweet potato will grow fine in heavy soil, but they won't develop tubers very well. And the tubers may in fact rot. Here I'm just adding a little bit of organic blood and bone to the bed. You don't need to go crazy. You don't need to over fertilize. Otherwise you'll just get a lot of leaf growth and not a lot of tuber. I like to mulch the bed nice and thick. In this case, it's sugarcane mulch, and then I water it in, make sure that blood and bone and fertilizer have been washed in. That's pretty much it for the refurb of the bed. I'm pretty happy with that little harvest after about, you know, two or three months. That's going to be a good feed. And whilst I can grow them a heck of a lot bigger, let me tell you, the bigger they get, the more grainier and awful they taste. Oh, well, you can't be starving, can you? That's why I picked myself a couple of uh, small sweet potato while I was out here, while Nina was doing the corn. Just a couple of little ones. That one there and this one here. A couple of little sweet potatoes. That should do us for dinner. Maybe one each and half of the kids. So we don't go hungry through the big storm here in Brisbane. 
Well, that was a bit of a retro clip taken some years ago uh, when we used to grow the sweet potato out the front there like that in the patch. Can you see the little pink flowers? Well, what's interesting is sweet potato isn't related at all to standard potatoes. It's in fact part of the morning glory family of plants, which are known mainly for their tubular cone-like pretty flowers, not the tubers. Well, I'm not finished with this bed yet. This is going to seem really unorthodox, but I'm now going to overplant over the top of this sweet potato things like tomatoes, basil, kale, spinach. And if you look here, see those shoots coming through? This is a bed that I planted earlier on, just the same as what I did and demonstrated before. And see that old mulch? That old mulch there was similar to the new mulch here. And what'll happen is that'll all break down and all those plants, the tomatoes, th they will all grow, give crops, be great. And the sweet potato will slowly come through that mulch and eventually overtake that bed. And when all those crops are gone, the sweet potato will remain and then those tubers will be ready to harvest in a few months after. Now in this bed here, I mentioned earlier, I tried to kill some sweet potato off. And the only reason I'm showing you this is to demonstrate how resilient it is so that you understand how easy it is to grow. Growing this plant the orthodox way, like putting a tuber on the kitchen sink in a glass of water and letting shoots come up and then planting those shoots out, that's all cool. You could put it in a pot on its own. You don't have to plant it with other plants and it'll grow very well in two or three months. You'll have tubers there to harvest. But see, here's a great example of how resilient it is. I've had that tarp over that bed for a good six months and still it's reshooting. It's just very difficult to kill off even if you want to. In the subtropics, sweet potato is probably one of the best weeds you can grow. We can always find a sweet potato at our place when we need one, that's for sure. Now check out this fella here. Look how odd it looks. The potato that is, not me. Something like this can be broken into several pieces and replanted back into the bed. I hope you enjoyed that video on growing sweet potato. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and also visit my blog selfsufficientme.com. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.